Death toll in Cambodia after the Grand Diamond City Hotel and Casino fire has risen to at least 19. That is according to officials and at least 70 are injured. Rescues continue to search for victims. They are expecting the death toll to continue rising. Many people became trapped in that building because the hotel used an electric system for rooms and elevators. So officials say when the fire started, the building lost electricity, causing people to become trapped inside their rooms. Multiple regions of Ukraine, including its capital, facing a massive Russian missile attack today. That's according to the Ukrainian military. They say that the great majority of the cruise missiles fired at Ukraine today, 54 of them were intercepted. Russia launched air and sea-based cruise missiles, along with attacking Ukraine's infrastructure facilities. Those staying in and around the capital of Ukraine are being warned about power outages after the strike. And they're being told to stock up on water to make sure their electronic devices are charged as well. In South Korea, five people are dead, 37 injured after a truck collided with a bus on a highway near the South Korean capital, causing a fire. Officials say three of the injured were in critical condition. At this time, no word on what caused that collision. A former Minneapolis police officer has now been charged with beating a man during the 2020 protests over the George Floyd's, George Floyd's death. Judson, Justin rather, Stetson has been charged with one count of felony assault. Stetson's accused of kicking and punching a man in the head repeatedly, along with slamming his head into the pavement. Police say that Stetson and others were patrolling in an unmarked van five nights after George Floyd's murder shooting less lethal rubber bullets at people. So far, there's been no word yet from the victim's attorney. The severe winter weather that has slammed most of the continental U.S., causing a travel nightmare for people across the nation, including one man who missed his heart transplant because of the weather. Just three weeks ago, Patrick Holland battling congest congestive heart failure was put on the active transplant list. Last Thursday evening, he got the call from UW Heart Institute that a heart was available for him. Doctors in Seattle gave Holland an eight hour window to get to the hospital. He booked the next flight. And once he got to the airport, his overnight flight canceled. I think I cried more <sighs> that day than I have in my life and had exerted every emotion that I've never had to get out of that funk. I immediately said, thank God there's gonna be a family that saving someone's dad, saving someone's brother, saving someone's someone's uncle, you know. Yeah, after three canceled flights in Anchorage, the window for a new heart closed. Holland says he will return to Seattle in a couple of weeks and stay so that he doesn't miss out on another chance for a new heart. And that's just heartbreaking. Meantime, here in San Antonio, we have not had the severe weather that the rest of the country has had to deal with. Just some clouds mm -hmm. and up to 70 degrees. It's warm. I was thinking all those people that are coming from Seattle, right, uh, for the, the Valero Alamo Bowl are thinking, man, this is nice. It's 40 right now in Seattle and raining. So this is an improvement here in San Antonio. Welcome to all those who are visiting San Antonio uh, right now. I do want to look across the country because we, we just talked about the flight delays. and We've heard so many of the stories just like that one. Not not great. Uh, there are no delays at uh, any of the major hubs except for San Francisco. We are seeing a delay there and they're getting some weather there across parts of California, some gusty winds, some rain, and that may be causing some problems. And that's just because these uh, don't say that there are delays doesn't mean you're not going to experience delays across the country. There's still many of them, but as far as the hubs and the major cities are concerned, everyone's doing okay except for San Francisco when it comes to weather. As we go outside for you right now, the sun's trying to peek through some of those high clouds that we have over top of us right now, 70 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 61, so that number's still high. It does drop off this afternoon, calm winds. And as we look at the uh, satellite and radar, there are some of those high clouds. We still have some low clouds in place, but a nice hole in the clouds has developed out near Uvalde. So almost full sun there, some sun around Lakey and Bandera. And we've seen some sprinkly showers show up. Basically, Gonzales points east, Victoria down the Bevo, and then up towards Bryan College Station. Not a lot here. Uh, we may see a shower or two pop up, but we're just not expecting much today. So your forecast? Just a 10 to 20% chance of rain. Temperatures will make their way up to 73. Cloudy to mostly cloudy skies with the light southerly winds becoming northeast a little bit later today. We'll take a look at the New Year's Eve forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Look forward to that. Thank you, Justin.
There's more than just COVID-19 going around right now. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has now issued a health warning that there's a virus is called Paracovius. It has been detected. ABC's Justin Finch explains what it is. Parecovirus is a group of viruses most common in the summer and fall that the CDC says most kids have had by the time they've reached kindergarten. According to the Cleveland Clinic, they can cause infections, including symptoms such as fever, rash, upper respiratory infection, and diarrhea. Parecovirus is dangerous in newborns, but causes milder symptoms that often go undiagnosed in older kids and adults. Most kids are asymptomatic or have mild cold-like symptoms that can spread through respiratory droplets or found in the intestinal tract. While most kids who get infected do fine, infants three months and younger can develop seizures, meningitis, or severe sepsis from parecovirus. To reduce the risks, health experts say parents or caregivers don't need to do any differently. Routinely washing hands and taking precautions like wearing a mask or isolating if you have a fever can prevent it spread along with other viruses. Because this virus isn't routinely tested, pediatricians and child health care providers should keep it in mind. For the most up-to-date information, go to cdc.gov or talk to your doctor. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. The Food and Drug Administration is adding sesame to its list of major food allergens. This is a result of the Food Allergy Safety Treatment Education and Research Act signed into law last year. Sesame will join the major food allergens list, which includes milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. Foods with sesame will now be subject to regulatory requirements, including labeling and manufacturing protocols. Sesame allergens can cause various symptoms, including coughing, vomiting, diarrhea, shortness of breath, and drops in blood pressure. A rare snow owl seen in California, but the residents there are saying about it. Pretty bird. Dr. Pepper is seeing a growth in sales, but Who's their competition as of late, and why are they their competition? Well, we're on these year top headlines for Cheddar News. The House of Representatives taking steps to ban TikTok on government-issued devices. That is, the government-wide ban is soon to set to go into effect. The directive came from the chief administrative officer of the lower chamber. That after the House's cybersecurity unit determined that the app is, quote, high risk to users due to a number of security risks. Meanwhile, FTX customers suing the company and former executives, including former CEO Sam Bankman-Fried, this is the attempt to reclaim their lost assets. The class action lawsuit argues that the failed crypto exchange allowed customer funds to be misappropriated and should be repaid for their lost funds and be repaid first. And it turns out all who went out and bought Taylor Swift's Midnight's on vinyl, well, you helped her break yet another record, the Midnight's Vinyl Edition, the first vinyl in 25 years to outsell the CD version. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Well, the soda market continues to go flat as Americans cut back on those bubbly beverages. However, one brand has continued to actually grow. It may be just what the doctor ordered, Dr. Pepper, that is. For a century, Dr. Pepper has marketed itself as the odd one out, a quirky alternative to mainstream brands like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Today, Keurig Dr. Pepper is America's third largest soft drink maker and is gaining on the competition. Dr. Pepper grew its dollar share by 9% from 2003 to 2021. Pepsi is in second place with 29%, but Keurig Dr. Pepper continues to grow with a roughly 25% share of the market. An unusual sight for Southern California, a snowy owl has perched on a neighborhood in Los Alamitos. For snow owls, home is normally the Arctic tundra. Orange County residents have seen the raptor flying from one roof to another in the neighborhood, not too far from the Joint Forces training base in Los Alamitos. It is a mystery as to why this wise owl would trade the wilderness for the chaos, though, of California. The only thing it has to worry about here is there's a lot more 
um, potential damage um, of things that can happen to it because we have a lot more cars, we have a lot more, we have power lines, we have um, the windmills. I mean, we have tons of, of things that traumatize flying it, um, birds in Southern California. So everybody, just leave the poor bird alone. People shocked they had never even heard of a snowy owl landing this far south. Gorgeous. Hey, a zoo in Virginia is already celebrating the new year by welcoming a new baby hippo to the family. The baby pygmy hippo was born on December 6th, weighed over 16 pounds. She's expected to grow to 600 pounds as she reaches adulthood. Both mom and calf spending some quality time together before they make their first public appearance. The Metro Richmond, Richmond Zoo is the only place in Virginia where you can see a baby from this endangered species. The zoo is asking for the public's help in naming the calf. If you visit the zoo anytime soon, make sure to leave a name suggestion. Aw, it looks like a little shiny penny. There you go. There you go. Just named it. I like it. I like it. Uh, as we go outside for you, we've got some breaks in those clouds. You see some blue sky there. So with a little bit of sun today, temperatures will be warm and it will be somewhat humid, at least for the first half of the day. Very quickly, I want to take you to Transguide. This is 281 at Loop 1604 on the uh, north side. Looks like we have some sort of crash here that is causing a backup or at least some sort of closure. At least that's what it looks right now. We're going to try to get some more information for you, but that may be causing some problems there. Uh, otherwise, the Almanac for today so far 69, the high 55, the low. We're already above average and we'll be well above average this afternoon. The record is 85 set just last year. We're not getting there today, thankfully. A look at that forecast is coming up. Not quite the same beautiful days we've been having because there's like clouds. In the sky. And I asked earlier where the blue sky was. It's, it's above the clouds. Ah, <laughs> that's the correct. It's answer. still there. It's the it's still there. You just can't see it. It's just blocked a little bit. And uh, we are having some traffic troubles out there, too. We are. And we just talked about that before the break. I'll show you trans guy one more time. So this is 1604 uh, westbound that we're looking at. And trans guy is zooming out a little bit here. Uh, so uh, yes, I, I think what we're looking at here, this is the camera. That is at, six, at 281 and 1604. And that actually is eastbound now that I look at it. Now that we're zooming out and gives us a little better perspective. So that does look like it is now eastbound that we're looking at. Whatever is going on there uh, does look like it is blocking traffic. And we can see that here on the map. It is uh, right there where we're having some big slowdowns. So just on the east side of 281. And it does look like it's the eastbound lanes that may be the problem here at any rate. Uh, you, you may want to avoid this area for a little bit until that uh, gets figured out. We'll continue to bring you updates if uh, if we get any on what's going on there. Meantime, let's talk about 2022 and its extremes. You remember this 16 just last week, December 23rd, coldest temperature we saw all year long. The hottest temperature back on July 11th, 107. Brutal. This summer was brutal, right? And as we look at the difference, it was a 91 degree difference between the coldest and hottest day in 2022. We had some pretty significant extremes there. And what about rainfall? Where are we going to end up? It appears we'll finish as the second driest year on record right now, 11.51. Could we see a little bit next couple of days? Maybe, but it won't amount to much. So it's pretty much a sure thing here that we'll finish second just behind 1917. And we averaged, by the way, this time of year, 32.19 inches. Just to give you some perspective, we are way below average. And I don't think we're going to get any help today. We see a couple of showers here and there, but nothing that's going to uh, really uh, even fill a rain gauge or even be measurable at this point. This is all really light stuff working up towards Gonzales and Cuero, up towards LaGrange. We are not seeing anything here in San Antonio. And in fact, we are starting to see a little bit of sun here and there. 70 degrees at the airport. Reporting cloudy skies, but as I said, it's probably more mostly cloudy. 66 in Fredericksburg, 60 in Junction, 63 in Del Rio. We started off cooler out west. It was warmer to the east where we had thicker moisture this morning. 71 right now in Gonzales, 75 Pleasanton, right at 70 here around Bear County at this hour. Dew point trend today. It's going to be humid for the first half of the day and really probably even going into the afternoon some, but those dew points fall off especially as we get into tonight as some drier air works in from the west and tomorrow will be somewhat of a drier day with regards to the dew point. Now we still may see a few very light showers, but they'll be light 
uh, tomorrow. Uh, even today, those, uh, these are not very heavy. Uh, they could potentially be a little bit heavier later today off to our east where there could be some thunderstorms that try to develop, but we're just not looking for much here around San Antonio. And if you're west of town, your rain chances are pretty much non-existent. Now, as we get into tomorrow, it does change a little bit. We'll start to see some light showers developing out west. The question will be, does any of this reach the ground? And if it does work through, it's probably not going to amount to much. We'll keep some small chances of light showers in there tomorrow. And it does clear out by the time we get into Friday night. And the weekend is looking great. The KSAT 12 hour forecast 72 at 2 o'clock, 73 at 3 p.m. We keep in a very small chance for a shower 67 at 6 o'clock, 64 by 7 p.m. And then tonight, it cloudy 56 at 11 o'clock and by midnight we're at 55. What does it look like down the line? So this is the piece of energy that's coming through right now that quickly moves east and the weekend will be nice because we'll be in between systems, which is why I think we see a lot of sun Saturday and really Sunday too. But by Monday, another system starts to dig out west. This one moves towards the middle part of the country and the computer models do want to generate a little bit of rain down here around San Antonio by Monday evening. We'll still be on the tail end of things as we always are, but there is a chance there, maybe a little better chance than say today and tomorrow. And this may be another big weather maker for the country in general. So uh, there may be some more travel issues. 73 today, 70 tomorrow, 76 Saturday, 78 on Sunday. Can't beat the weather over the weekend. Uh, more humidity though Sunday and that chance of rain Monday 79 a little cooler by Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you Justin. The new Avatar movie shattering the box office during the holiday season. How much money it's made so far in just two weeks may surprise you. James Cameron's Avatar, The Way of Water, is making waves at the box office. It's a sequel to his previous film about humans invading the alien planet of Pandora. His new movie has earned over a billion dollars worldwide. Andrew Dimbert with ABC on how it only took two weeks to achieve this huge box office success. The Way of Water connects all things. It's the biggest box office hit this holiday season. This is our home! Earning more than $1 billion in two weeks, Avatar The Way of Water becoming the first movie in 2022 to hit that mark so quickly. It took Top Gun Maverick 31 days. Having any fun yet? And more than four months for Jurassic World Dominion. Bigger. Why do they always have to go bigger? But the big bucks need to be even bigger for James Cameron's latest epic to make a profit. Yeah probably cost about $350 million to make, then another $100 million in marketing. Analysts believe that it has to hit about $1.5 billion to $2 billion in box office receipts to just be profitable. Other films at the box office faltered over the long holiday weekend. The Whitney Houston biopic, Want to Dance with Somebody, earning just $6.8 million in the U.S., while Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, clawed its way to $20 million. While the formula for a box office success has changed dramatically since the pandemic, James Cameron's latest venture shows that big spectacles are still bringing in the numbers. The technology that James Cameron has used has never been used before, and it is not something that on your first viewing you want to see on your TV, on your laptop, on your phone. He knows how to push the envelope. Hey, SA Live just celebrated Ooh. its eighth birthday. And the best way to celebrate eight is with a flashback to the 80s. Here's Mike and Fiona. I mean, can yes. you believe it? And eight that is, years. of course, why we blend with the 1980s theme. Mm -hmm. Very good. I like mm -hmm. I like the little belly hoop type thing going on right there. So, hey, I'll tell you what. What better way to celebrate than with lots of balloons? And boy, if you want to really decorate your place, this is the lady that can do it. Yes, Gail Garza Mitchell, owner of Bell of Balloons. Tell them what you can do. Well, sky is the limit. This is one of probably a, a very popular um, decoration that we do is called a balloon wall and it's a linked balloon wall. 
So it's a it's a different technique than using the regular balloon. No wall too big, no wall no, too small, right? Literally, I mean, if you want to do a ballroom like this, we can do the ballroom. Mm -hmm. We can do um, a mini wall. Some people just want like a six by six, something to take pictures. We can do that too. Yes. But truly, sky's the limit. Speaking yeah, of eighties, how about doing a little roller skating? Jen's going to be out there at the rollercade and great hair going on as well. And helping us to celebrate in a sweet way, Nadler's Bakery Ooh. and Deli. And they got some new things to talk about as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, if you want to go all out for your birthday this year, guess what? Games to You has every game you can think of, and we give their rock climbing wall a go. That and a whole lot more on SA Live. Only three days left until the start of the new year. Lots of celebrations are happening in San Antonio, some even extending into January. I right, just to name a few, the Pro Restaurant having its 70s themed party on December 31st. The Rotary Ice Rink open to the public until January 16th. And the 2023 Asian Festival is happening on January 22nd. If you want a complete list of all the fun things you can do, visit our article on KSAT.com. All right, one final look at Transguide. We're still watching what's going on there at 1604 Gold Canyon. That is the overpass there at Gold Canyon. We're looking east from the 281 interchange. And they've got the road blocked, so this is going to cause some issues if you're traveling eastbound or westbound. Looks like the traffic is stacking up, so just a heads up. Some sort of incident there. And the maps are showing that we are starting to see some pretty significant backups both ways uh, there on 1604. Uh, just east of 281. Meantime, a lot of cloud cover here around San Antonio. A few showers off to our east. That's where most of them will stay relegated today. There is a small chance of a shower here in San Antonio, but I don't expect much. 73, 70 tomorrow with a small chance of a light shower. Otherwise, we clear out for the weekend and we ring in the new year with some great weather before another chance of rain shows up on Monday. So happy New Year's Eve, Eve, Eve. Yes. And we're celebrating the 80s on SA Live. Might look pretty good in the sweater and the shades. SA